Welcome back to Scale Auto Guys Workbench. Today we're going to be working on this MPC 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. This is a 2008 edition of this kit. I'm sure it's been repopped a, a million times. But let's take a look at what, what you get in the box here. It's that big Dodge Coronet body. At first glance, there is a little bit of cleanup to do on it. There's some old lines back here that need to be taken care of. But other than that, it's pretty clean. Next up, your floor pan and your interior tub. The interior looks, well, as good as it could. It's not as detailed as I'd like, but it's nice. That'll paint up nice is your uh, floor pan I'm not so sure about these uh, this style um, I've in the past had mixed results on this split sus um, suspension if you will frame if you will um, where you have to attach your front subframe to this Sometimes, I've, I've had it happen a couple of times, not too many, but just just enough to make me go, I really don't like that. <laughs> but it has the separate front subframe. So in the big plastic bag, you get the following trees here. Part of your intake and your hood scoops. The full solid seats usually, well here lately, um, most kits come with separate seat backs that you have to attach. This one they're already attached for you so that should make it a little bit nicer when it comes to detailing. Next tree is your front fascia and your hood and your dash. Steering wheel looks a little wonky because it was... Uh, a little smushed in the box. Now I've had this kit hanging around for a while and uh, just decided tonight I would go ahead and start putting it together. Next tree here is that front subframe I was talking about. You also have your exhaust and uh, part of your front suspension. Next tree here, you got another steering wheel and all your underhood goodies, another dashboard. Did I do did, did I did I look at that right? Yeah, you have that dashboard. And that dashboard. Well, as strange as that is, you also have your engine block here with a separate transmission. This gives you a triple deuce intake manifold. And on the next tree, you have another engine block and you have the dual quad intake or your cross ram intake. It also gives you, I'm guessing these are wheel backs here, but these are wheel backs up here as well. So this is a, a strange one. When you look in the directions, they only call for the one engine and they don't mention the other one at all. Your chrome tree. Now this is just to give you an idea how old this kit is and how much things have changed. Here's one of the chrome trees which gives you a front and rear uh, grill and tail light and bumpers. Bumper, excuse me, bumper. When was the last time you seen your chrome wrapped in paper like this? I haven't seen one in a while. Gives you two sets of wheels. 
either the uh, stock, what do they call them, the 500, Rally 500 wheels, I think is what they called them, where you give you these uh, aftermarket kind of a mag wheel, or down over here, you give the, it gives you these racing wheels. So you get three sets of wheels with this. So let's take a look at what they give you for tires. They give you four Goodyear branded hollow tires. The ones where you have to snip the backs out of them. Those are never fun. You can never get those totally clean. But that's the only set of tires it gives you. It doesn't give you like racing slicks or anything like that to go with those uh, the wider rims. Rims for another project maybe? Hmm, okay. I'll go with that. Next up, as usual, this is your windshield and front rear glass and uh, I think there's some side glass in there too. It's what it feels like. <clears throat> and like I said, I've always said, I never open this until I'm ready for it. And here's your taillights as, as well. The reason why I don't open those is because you drop them, whatever, they get scratched, blah, blah, blah. Next up is another little surprise gift. Here's your decal sheet. The stripes come red, white, or black. You know, you got a variety there that you can choose from. They also give you an MPC sticker. That's not a water slide decal, that's an actual sticker, a decal sticker or whatever. It's not water slide, put it that way. That was kind of a neat little bonus to have in there. And another neat little bonus is they give you a lithograph of that box. So you cut this out fold it up and glue it together and you have a miniature of the box that this kit came in. Oh, not to mention the box art on this box. Now let's see if I can get it open easier this time than I did before. Hold on. The bottom of the box is also like a lithograph, if you will. So it gives you additional box art. And of course on the bottom of the box it gives you all of these, you know, parts trees listings. Yeah. I'll just throw that there. Last thing up is your direction sheet. And like I was saying, they only list the one engine. They don't mention the secondary engine at all. They don't mention the, uh, the deep dish mag wheels, or if you want to call them mag wheels, dish wheels, I don't know what the heck they're called, but anyway, the deep wheels, they don't mention those at all. Basically just lists all the stock parts and stock decal locations. So that's it. The uh, well, here's a confusing thing that I just saw. Let me draw this up to the camera a little bit. MPC, right? Right down there, the new AMT 70 Dodge Super B kit. <laughs> a little confusing. <laughs> so 
So that tells you a little bit of the roots from whence this car sprang. Um, this is a round two produced vehicle, but it, it's very apparent that it was also an AMT kit at one time, but now they're marketing it as an MPC. It really doesn't matter who made it, I guess. But it's just interesting that they would have that on the direction sheet. Okay, well, there you are. Let's go ahead and get some sub-assemblies put together. Little flash cleanup. Let's throw some primer. And uh, let's get started on this build. This one is going to be... It looks like it's going to be a nice kit to put together. We'll have to wait until the final to see that though. All right, let's get started.
Guess what, fellas? It's bare metal foil time! Okay fellas, all of the bare metal foil is done. Did all the way around the wheel wells, door handles, window trim. There's not a whole lot of foil on this vehicle. It's just basic, bare minimum stuff. So let's get on with the window installation. I still have a little bit to do on the interior and then we have the final assembly. Okay, fellas, for any of you that are thinking about building this kit, or if you have this kit and you want to build it, there is a one little thing in the direction sheet that it recommends you do. And that is to adjust the windshield so you have to grind off that little section so it will fit um, with the interior correctly so I'm gonna do it with my my Dremel tool here I figured this would be the fastest easiest way of doing it without running the risk of cracking the glass so it's talking about doing from about this point right here back and up about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm just going to guesstimate it. I don't I don't know. Let's give it a shot. All I have to do is clean this up just a little bit. That's that's roughly a sixteenth of an inch here. Approximately. It's not exact. Let me get my other knife here and just kind of clean up that edge a little bit. It's got a little bit of melted plastic on it and this one does too. See that Dremel it spins so fast that it more or less melts the plastic more than it sands it but yeah hopefully that'll work. Yeah while you guys weren't looking I uh, finished up this interior and uh, Yeah, that looks 
That looks about right. So let's go ahead and get the windows installed. Let me uh, switch camera angles here. Hold on just a sec. Okay, that's a little bit better angle. You guys can pretty much see what I'm doing now. And I've got so much stuff going on right now. My desk is just loaded. <laughs> okay, so again with the Mod Podge. Let's get this windshield put down here in place. This bottle of Mod Podge is nice. But the tip tends to clog easily. I don't know why. It's got a gigantic hole in it. <laughs> Let's see, right now I'm going to have to weight this down so it, it stays down because it wants to pop up. So let me get some uh, weight in there and. I'll be back with the rest of the windows. All right, fellas. I'm down to just the last few items to go on this build. As you can see, I have the glass in there, and it was glass all the way around on this car. You got side glass, front and rear glass, which makes it nice because if you display this on a shelf, you don't have to worry about the interior getting full of dust and making it look like you know what and you don't have to take it apart to clean it or anything like that I still have a few things to do um, I still have to put the air induction system on the back of the hood and we got to get the final little details put together let me get on that and I'll see you at the turntable Welcome back to the final on the 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B by MPC. As I stated at the beginning of this video, this is a 2008 edition of the kit. It did come with a couple of different engine options to give you the 440 Magnum and a 426 Hemi. It was a ton of fun to build this kit, but because of the era of the car, it did have the typical little flaws. They weren't too bad. It was easy to fix. I like the fact that it has side glass as well as your front and rear, obviously, but the side glass makes it nice. The color is a deco art craft paint called Peacock Pearl. It also has two coats of Tamiya Clear over it, just enough to give it just a little bit of shine, not too over the top shiny because 1970 era cars weren't over the top shiny. I mean, they did have a shine to them, obviously, but they weren't over the top. The wheels that came on this kit look okay, but I think that a set of Krager Super Sports or Keystone Classics would have been a little bit more era specific and I think they would have looked better as well but then again I'm kind of partial to those those brands of wheels and you know I really like them but they're getting harder and harder to find them in kits they don't put them in kits anymore for some reason so what do you guys think of this build Drop me a comment in the comment section below and let me know. Was it good? Was it bad? There is one thing that I need to point out about this build, though, that I didn't show previously in the video. The stripes will go along the sides and the back. Well, those particular stripes, because of their age, 
they broke into several pieces especially the one on this side here this one here broke into about 15 different pieces the one on the passenger side it broke in half like right in here and you can see a little spot that's because a chunk of the decal went flying off somewhere and I couldn't uh, get it to line up to, and look right it had a big lump there when I pushed it together to try to line it up so I just left it as you know like that so it's no big deal um, this car was a lot of fun to build and if you get a chance to get one get your hands on one of these I would strongly suggest you buy it, um, it because of the two engine options you have spare parts um, this actually had a rear axle so that if you wanted to you could have well I could have I should say tub the back end put uh, big slicks on the back it came with a uh, shortened rear axle just for that purpose so it had a lot of options from previous editions obviously so I just built mine basically box stock bone stock from the factory with the exception of the wheels um, I built it with the 426 Hemi option with the four speed and the Hearst slap shifter I'll try to get you some close-up pictures of that uh, when uh, at the end of the video here well I hope you enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and click that thumbs up button if you have any questions or comments please write those in the comment section below and I'll be happy to respond as soon as possible be sure to follow me on Facebook and don't forget to check out my merchandise shop by following the link in the description box below or by clicking the store button on my home page. If you want more videos like this one make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching Scale Auto Guys Workbench and I'll see you on the next build.